Hello lovelies, it's Paul Browning back with another art journal page and this time I'm starting off with some Dilusions paint, a turquoise colour and though I know there are plenty of ways that you can apply this paint I've always favoured using one of those sponge brushes. I don't know why but I kind of get the smooth all over paint effect that I I prefer with a with a sponge brush and what I'm going to do now that I've laid the base solid color of turquoise is I'm going to grab a blue color from Dilusions and again I'm going to very quickly layer um, another solid coat of color on top Dilutions doesn't dry very quickly, so you've got to pull into your time, but nevertheless, I thought I'd still do this fairly quickly and fairly patchily because what I wanted to do was, once I've covered it in the blue colour, was to start removing it, so treating the blue colour like it was a glaze. As you can see, I've taken a baby wipe, starting from the middle because the first time you take any colour off it's going to take a lot off and I started blending outward so there's going to be a lot more blue as a border. Here it is when it's dried and I'm going to do something different here which I haven't done for a long while which is to stamp with paint. Normally it's such a faff that I prefer to stamp with ink um, but I knew that with the ink colours I had if I stamped them onto the blue and green page they weren't going to stand out. I don't have any green inks that would really pop out on that page. So I took a sponge, an uh, ordinary makeup sponge, and tried to get as light a coat onto the sponge as possible and then use that to wipe the paint over my rubber stamp. And the rubber stamp is by Cheryl Kahn, I think, the actual design. It's initially for an old tool, I think it was called a, a roller graph. So I've probably this stamp is no longer available, although I believe the roller graph machines still are. Anyway, I took it off its roll, flattened it out, and uh, I thought this would make a great background stamp. And as you can see, I've stamped it all up and down the left and the right hand sides. I know it's going to be a background, so it didn't matter that in some of the cases the paint the, the the image painted image didn't fully uh, stamp but you know gives it a nice rough arty look here I'm taking a stencil by all and create and I started out with my archive link um, with with a, with one of those uh, flat round sponges that you use with uh, a Tim Holtz blending tool didn't quite get the ink through so I went back to using a, a makeup sponge and put black around the border. Give it a nice. Now, I had some gaps and I wanted to fill them in, so again, with a all create rather than a stencil, I took a stamp set and filled in some more areas around the border just to give it that extra arty look. <laughs> I say arty and grunge if it means anything, but it doesn't. Okay, what I've done is I've been inspired by various art journalists, Diane Reevey, James Burke, Tisha Moore, to name but three, who take images and collage with them. So I thought what I'd do is take a few of the ones I've drawn, my Rebel Realness collection, and I would cut out faces, bodies and heads and then like that childhood thing of uh, of those paper dress-up dolls is I would switch them all about um, to make, as far as I'm concerned, three new characters and designs I could play with. And here we go. So I start once I placed them where I wanted to. I started off by gluing just a little bit of dab of glue on the head to the body, and I did this on all three, just a little dab, just to keep it in place. I did the same with attaching the body to the feet. That way I sort of like had a, once it had dried, um, a, a complete figure that I could 
turn turn over and glue rather than try and glue little pieces on. Okay, you see, much easier to pick up using a piece of scrap paper underneath. I applied glue all over the digital stamp and place down. Okay, pressing it in place. Once all the figures have been stuck down and dried, I took my watercolour set and began to paint my figures. Okay, so they're kooky and weird, don't need to be natural. Um, so we're not talking about pink hues for the face or anything like that. I decided I prefer them to be a little on the deathly looking side <laughs> and make them grey. And there we go. I'm showing you how, to, how I've painted in the hole of the face. Now my right little figure is completely painted. We're not talking making extra special effort. Oh yes, I've painted between the lines. I've not painted outside the lines. Except when I've been a little bit too <laughs> too fast and loose with the paint. It's gone a little bit watery and gone about the lines. But I know that that's not going to be seen because any paint that goes outside the lines is going to be covered when I, when I sort of like paint it with a pen later. So here we go. The figures are all being given a flat flat wash of colour using my watercolours. And now I've taken a, I think it's a 5M Posca pen in black, and I'm just going to outline the outside of my stamps just to give it a thicker a thicker line around the outside brilliant now with using the Cheryl Khan stamp I was kind of inspired to outline what was white on these stamps with gold because she has a wonderful way of when she stamps her figures she outlines in gold so I thought I'd do the same thing is wasn't so keen on it when I did it <laughs> or the, the pen I used not not quite the same effect however I've gone with it and I've decided to stick with it so I've taken my pencils and I'm now getting darker shades of the colour so for the pink I'm getting a kind of darker red and I'm adding my shadows just to give a bit more pop make it punch out Okay, just outlining around the outside of the image plus anywhere where shapes cr bump into each other just to give the extra shadow. I don't do the kind, as you know from watching my other videos, I don't do the kind of shading that these brilliant sort of like copy marker shading guys can do. They do these brilliant things. I do this very bold kind of shading. Here's where I decided finally I did not like that gold and took a bright blue pen to match the background and outlined it and I think, yeah, works a heck of a lot better. The only trouble with doing that is I did, I did kind of go over my black lines that I did earlier. So here we go again, outlining in black, just to tidy it up a bit more. Yeah, it may seem like a lot of work where I <laughs> outline things paint it then outline them again but hey it's all enjoyable i've penciled in where i want the um, journaling to go celebrate your difference and i've laid down a base color in uh, yellow uh, we're using a posca pen what you don't see here is it took about two or three layers so i colored it in let it dry colored it in let it dry and colored it in i'm now taking dilutions paint pens and i'm using a red a black and a purple and outlining the text to make it pop out a bit more. The only thing again is that, as you'll see later, 
is when I stepped back and looked at it, I wanted it to have a bit more punch. I think the thin, the thin outline didn't work for me. However, here I am with decided that for each word I would colour it differently so and I would decorate and doodle on the inside the difference so celebrate has dots your has stripes and difference I had a line drawing the letters here you'll see I decided what I would do is take a thicker thicker pen and outline it so I've taken my 5m pen and I've done the red the purple and the black in a thicker line I think that makes it pop out even more, gives you that more cartoonish look I like. And yes, although I like the lines, the red lines of over the yellow, I decided I preferred a, a more of a crosshatched look, so I went over it again. And it just made the the red pop out a lot more. Okay, finally I've taken a Tim Holtz stencil and some orange dilutions paint and I'm going to fill in some of the blank areas just to balance it out with some patchy orange marks. And there we go. Quick look at it. Looks like it's finished. Happy with that. <laughs> okay, picture's coming up and I'm glad you like I hope you like this. Not glad you like this. Hope you like this. And um, I'll speak to you later or see you later. Bye.